Welcome to worship with the South Sound United Methodist Churches. It is a blessing to worship together today. You are welcome here if you have been worshiping with one of our churches for decades, or if this is your first time joining us in worship. You are welcome here if you are worshiping in your pajamas today with your Sunday breakfast and a cup of coffee or if you got dressed up in your Sunday best to come to worship this morning. You are welcome here if you are filled with anxiety and worry, and this quarantine time is a struggle each and every day. And you are welcome here if you are finding gifts and blessing in this time of being at home and away from the world. You are welcome here if you are at home with a whole bunch of people and they're starting to drive you a little bit batty. 
and you are welcome here if you are sheltered in solitude and longing for the touch of another human being. You are welcome here if you are a follower of Jesus, and you are welcome here if you are wondering and doubting and think maybe following Jesus might be for you. You are welcome here. Let's worship together. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, you have so much to show us and to tell us, things that no human eyes have seen, things that no human ears have heard, things that you have prepared for those you love. Mighty God, your promises are like shelter in a storm to us and to our children, to all those far and near, to everyone who hears your call. Oh, that we might have the mind of Christ and know and understand your truth. We wait as empty vessels, ready to be filled to overflowing with your living water. Come and speak to our hearts today. May we, like those on the Emmaus Road, find your words burning with hope in our lives. Strengthen us and give us courage for the journey ahead. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let it be, 
Dear Lord, let it be. It is my great honor and pleasure to read this scripture that my good friend Pastor Pam will be preaching upon this morning. The scripture is from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. It's the walk to Emmaus. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it. And he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning with us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, South Sound Co-op. It is so good to see all of you. We are here with a bunch of really awesome young people from our South Sound Co-op. Yep, thumbs up all around. And we were having a conversation about our scripture passage today. And we were talking about the fact that we were really wondering about why it was that the disciples on the road to Emmaus didn't recognize Jesus when he was walking right next to them and having a whole conversation. And over the course of our discussion, we came to decide that the reason that they didn't recognize Jesus was because they were sad. And we talked about the fact that a lot of us know what it's like to be very, very sad. We may have had experiences <clears throat> in our lives earlier where we have felt sad, and we also talked about the fact that right now a lot of us are feeling sad and disappointed because things are not going the way we were expecting. So in the same way that the disciples decided to go to Emmaus instead of sticking around Jerusalem to see what was going to happen because they were so disappointed 
with the fact that Jesus had, had been killed and they weren't, and they didn't trust or they weren't ready to believe the resurrection accounts that they heard from the other disciples. In the same way we're experiencing maybe smaller disappointments, but disappointments certainly about trips that are canceled, not being in school, not seeing our friends. There's, there's a lot of big feelings that we're all feeling right now. And we talked a little bit also about the fact that when we feel really big feelings, that sometimes they can be all consuming. So sometimes we're so sad or so disappointed or so angry that nothing else matters that we don't recognize all of the good things in our lives because we're so sad but we also recognize that sometimes when we're feeling really big feelings that sometimes that's a good reminder that we need to eat something <laughs> because sometimes when we eat something comforting something that tastes good and we start to feel a little better it helps us to recognize all of the good things in our lives. And we think that's what happened with the disciples on the Emmaus Road, is that once they had something to eat, and once they experienced eating with Jesus, just like they had a few days ago when they were with him at the Last Supper, all of a sudden they were able to recognize that Jesus was present in their midst. So in the same way, when we are feeling angry or sad or disappointed or any of the other big feelings, we'll remember that Jesus is inviting us, just like Jesus invited the disciples, that when we're feeling all those big feelings, it's a good time to have a bite to eat and take a moment to recognize and notice all of the good things in our lives. Because once we recognize those good things, we'll be just like the disciples. We'll want to run out and tell everyone all of those good things that we are experiencing. And that might make other people feel better, too. So, as we were thinking about that, we decided one of the good things we wanted to tell all of you this morning is we came up with an alphabet prayer. And so an alphabet prayer is when you come up with a word for every letter of the alphabet that describes God. I'm so. going to read the list that our young people came up with, and you all are going to repeat after me, okay? Okay. God is amazing. God is amazing. 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 Beautiful. 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 Creator. Creator. Darling. 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 Excellent. Darling. Excellent. Excellent. Fantastic Darling. and fearless. Fantastic and fearless. Good. 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 Helpful. Helpful. Incredible and just. Incredible and just. King and Lord. King and Lord. God is magic. God is magic. Nice. Nice. Obedient. Obedient. Which we think means God keeps God's promises. God is perfect. God is perfect. Queen and quick. Rising. Rising. Such a good God. Trusting. Unbelievable. Valiant. Valiant. Working. Working. Exciting. Exciting. Yeasty. Yeasty. And zealous. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For all of the ways. For all of the ways. You help us notice you. You help us notice you. When we're feeling big feelings. When we're feeling big feelings. When we're feeling small feelings. And any time we take a bite of food. And any time we take a bite of food. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. I am speaking to you um, today from the sanctuary at Rochester United Methodist Church. Um, now, the last time I gave a message here, 
was Sunday, March 8th. That was seven Sundays ago. Seven Sundays of quarantine from our church buildings and in-person connection with one another. I have missed being with you here, as well as in the other church that I pastor, Oakville United Methodist Church, just seven miles from here on Highway 12, heading west to the coast. That is the distance, coincidentally, of the journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus, the focus of our scripture reading today. Seven is a sacred number in scripture, reflecting divinity. And so it's good to be here in this sacred space, although we have not been able to be here physically together for a while, but I do believe that we are joined in faith by the Holy Spirit. So yes, we've been separated physically for a while, but the bond that we share of faith and connection to Jesus Christ and one another continues. The gospel stories of Christ's ministry of his death and resurrection tell us that church is about loving relationships with God and, and one another. The temporary breaking of physical connection cannot break the body of Christ, our connection with God and one another. On this third Sunday of Easter, we remember that being followers and living the way of Christ is not rooted in buildings or programs, material gifts or status. It's about following Christ, God among us, who continues to move among us, rejoice and suffer with us, and ever so gently show us the way of life. The Emmaus story reminds us that Christ was not a traditional salesman, not like some of uh, the religious salespeople we see who can sometimes be pushy and demanding, bowed and bound up in a boxed up understanding of who Christ was and is. The New Interpreter's Bible commentary notes that Luke portrays Jesus as God who never forces himself upon others. Faith must always be a spontaneous, voluntary response to God's grace. That's important to remember as we struggle to be the church in new ways. At times, the past seven weeks have been somewhat frantic. How to be the church? What if people lose interest in church and don't come back? Will people... Come back when the physical doors open again. Are we doing enough to keep us all together? The Emmaus story sheds light about the power of Christ when a body of believers receives a devastating loss. But they discover that he is with them still. In this there is hope and power. Come what may, come what may to all of us. Luke tells us that the risen Christ joins two disciples traveling from Jerusalem to the town of Emmaus. If you've ever traveled the road between Rochester and Oakville, that's a good way to think about the distance. Seven miles. Walking at a good clip, well, that takes about two and a half hours. Some of you, I know, have made that trek, and you know it well. There's plenty of time for conversation and rest at the end of this walk, and of course, that rest is much welcome. And so remember how that rest must have felt like for Jesus and his companions, how they must have appreciated when they finally reached Emmaus and they shared a meal together. On the road together, we know that Jesus opens up the scriptures uh, and he tells them to the disciples, but they still don't recognize him. They spend hours together as he unpacks the word of God. And when they finally reach their destination, they share a meal. But Jesus did not presuppose that he was welcome to share that meal with them. 
scripture tells us Jesus walked as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. This is a pivotal moment in which the disciples invite Jesus to the table. He wants our invitation. Relationship with God is a mutual thing. An invitation is at the heart of relationship with God and one another. At the table together, Jesus takes the bread and he breaks it and he blesses it and he gives it to the disciples in a moment of community. Like we have shared here in this sanctuary and in sanctuaries all over the world for centuries. It is in this moment that the disciples see who Jesus is. It is in this moment that Jesus also vanishes. <laughs> but the gospel, if we listen, if we allow Jesus to unpack it for us, tells us something. If we are not careful as followers of Christ, we too can try to hold on to a building or a dogma that seeks to exert control over God and others. It is only when we listen to his words on our own lifelong Emmaus walk, spend our days in loving relationship with others, and seek welcoming, inclusive community that we see him. That's good news for all of us pandemic pastors out there who have been struggling these past seven weeks to provide worship and care outside the walls of the bricks and mortar church. Like many of you committed to faithfully being the church in quarantine, I've been thinking a lot about what I need to do, what needs to be done, and, and how to reach out to all of you. And this past week, I had an Emmaus moment. I was driving home from an errand, which of course involved uh, social distancing and a face mask. And as I neared home, one of my congregation members called me and said that her young son had a question about scripture. I sit right here in this sanctuary with that little boy every Sunday during the children's moment. And I miss him and I miss all of our young people. And it was good to hear his voice in the background. Mom and I talked for a bit and, um, and then she put, her little boy on the phone. And this was so very cool because I had been fretting about how to connect with people. And here was this little guy and his mom calling me. They were inviting me. I love the question that the little boy had. He wanted to know, where is Jesus? Is he in heaven? Where is he? Now the timing was wonderful, Super, really, because I just started working on my sermon for today where Jesus and the disciples are walking on the road to Emmaus. And those disciples were probably wondering where Jesus was, too. There had been stories of sightings of him. What were they to think? Where was he? So this, this passage had been on my mind, and I'd been thinking about how Jesus walks with us when we cannot see him. Why is that? I've been thinking about that supernatural moment when the disciples' eyes locked on the eyes of this stranger who joined them on the road, and in the breaking of the bread, in the sharing of the meal, they saw him. The question from my young friend about where Jesus is reminds me that they're, that they're never really is a way to know when Jesus is going to show up. We just know that he does. And sometimes we realize it, we realize that it's him, and sometimes we do not. The fact is he's in us and he's in others and he's everywhere. And these past seven weeks, perhaps we've been worried too much about confining Jesus to the sacred spaces of our sanctuaries. He's everywhere. It's important to remember that. And you know, it took a little boy to remind me of that. 
a little boy who was inviting me to tell him more about Jesus. In fact, he was inviting Jesus to stay. So I told my young friend on the phone that Jesus has superpowers. He can show up anywhere. And we talked about that for a while. And after a, a while more, my, my little friend said goodbye. I can't tell you how wonderful it was to get that call and experience the sacred spirit of invitation and to spend time with my congregation member, one of our smallest ones, and his mom. And while I had thought about how to connect and been thinking about that a lot, they connected with me. They called me. It meant a lot. My takeaway from uh, that moment is that it is powerful when we simply connect with people. It is joyful. It is a, a good and joyful thing when we take the time to connect, even on the phone. And, and this is Christ's spirit of invitation and mutual and shared experience. And as far as the message from the road to Emmaus, I continue to reflect on how Jesus continues to travel with us and on our behalf. The question is, do we see him? Will we see him? The scriptures say that the disciples' hearts burned as they heard the stranger talk to them about the ministry of Jesus and the meaning of the ancient scripture. They came alive. They came alive as they talked about Jesus' life and what that meant and what his death meant. It was the discussion that embodied Jesus invites us all. There's worship and there's study and there's connecting with one another and God and there is the daily journey with him and sometimes we see him and sometimes we do not. We've learned in recent weeks that there are different ways to worship and study and connect with one another and God and Jesus just continues to surprise us. And I can say that I saw Christ in the voice of a little boy. And my heart was warm and joyful. In the past seven weeks, I believe many of you have seen Christ too. He has and continues to appear at hospitals, on school buses delivering food, in online worship, in parents struggling to patiently homeschool their children. And he appears in your many acts of responsible kindness, checking on neighbors, and staying home to stop the spread of the virus. That will eventually be tamped down. When we do get back together in person, I pray that we will remember the church is not a building where Christ is only. The church is a place that is everywhere because Christ is everywhere. He's in us all, and that is the greatest hope of all. As I told the little boy, Christ's superpowers mean he can do anything, even transform a sometimes rigid, sometimes unwelcoming, and sometimes judgmental church into one of his own making. And that is truly super. Glory be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the gift of prayer. That conversation that is born out of your desire to be in relationship with you and you with us. Thank you that we are able to speak to a loving Lord who created the universe and created us. We thank you for this day and for the opportunity to worship you right here and right now. It's our prayer that during this time we have together, we are able to set aside the concerns of daily life for a while, that we are able to be fully present here and now in our minds and hearts. Loving God, we thank you for this earth, our home, for the white sky and the blessed sun for the oceans and streams, for the towering hills and the whispering wind, for the trees and the birds 
beings that live among them and the green grass. We thank you for our senses by which we hear the songs of birds, see the splendor of the forest, taste the fruits of autumn, rejoice in the feel of snow, and smell the scents of the spring flowers. Holy One, we offer you thanks for each person who've brought who who've brought this here brought here that who you've brought here this morning. We thank you that you continue to be at, to add to our number. We pray that any new listeners and viewers will find comfort and encouragement in this time of worship, and that at some time they might come to deploy their gifts and talents for the good of your people and the glory of your name. Almighty God, you are a God who can do all things. You reign over all. Power and might are in your hands. Lord, we lift up to you today all who are hurting and suffering and living in diminished circumstances. Remember before you all those who are poor and neglected, all those for whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to comfort and care for those who are broken in body or spirit. We especially pray for those who suffer physically with illness or mentally with depression or anxiety. Lord, come breathe on these people by your Holy Spirit and bring great love, hope, and joy to us, your church. Open our eyes and make us aware of the opportunities that we have to bless others. Help us to minister to others in the strength of your spirit and to work in unity together with renewed spirits. As we live in this unprecedented time of the pandemic, we pray for the protection of all people across the planet. Alert us to ways we can reach out and help, encourage and serve in this time. Help us to see the opportunities that you present to us. Gracious God, we ground our prayer in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The victory of resurrection casts both light and hope on the present crisis. The victory of resurrection makes possible the changes you want to bring about in us and in our world. That victory is good news that satisfies our hearts and souls. May we live it and share it in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me now in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lend us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Rich. Thank you for representing St. Andrew's United Methodist Church so well today. We are in prayer for Pastor Denise, who's not feeling well. Um, get well soon, Denise. Dear friends, each of our South Sound Cooperative Churches is striving to be faithful to our call in these times. What does it mean to go into all the world proclaiming Christ as Lord, baptizing and teaching in the name of Jesus in these days of pandemic? We are striving to nurture the relationships which are at the heart of the communities of faith that we enjoy, which we know so well. And we're doing that with phone calls and emails and Facebook posts and video chats. We're using these new technologies to proclaim the good news of God as we worship together in a virtual church which combines all of our congregations in this unique way each week as we worship together. We are organizing our work with online meetings and long email chains to make decisions for our churches. We're trying to find ways to keep ourselves involved in person-to-person -person ministries. We're not allowing the stay-at-home order to keep the gospel home. We're hoping that it will go out into the world still. In recent days, through our efforts, I have found myself praying over the phone with people I hardly know, but who are connecting or reconnecting with the church 
because of these new things that we're doing. We are recruiting people like you to call on our homebound, to deliver groceries or pray or give to further the efforts of our church. So I'm very grateful for the sustained giving that you all are doing. We know well that some within our church families have lost their jobs, are facing uncertain futures with income concerns. They're worried about those big bills that may be stacking up even now. We're not all in the place where we can give generously, as, but some among us are able to be generous in these times, and many of you already have been. Giving through the online portal at First Olympia has grown substantially since the middle of March, and it is a joy to know that so many people are taking the time to fill out a check and put it in the mail. I know you're doing that because I'm the one at First Church who picks up the mail on Tuesday mornings. And this week, when I went to pick it up, the lady behind the counter said, oh my goodness, you have three stacks of mail. She said, I hope they're not all bills. And I said, oh, there's a few bills in there, but most of those envelopes are checks. And she said, oh, you must have a very generous congregation. And I said, oh yes, we do. We most certainly do. So thank you for your witness to this postal clerk. And thank you for the gifts that sustain the work of the church that pay the bills, including the salaries of your pastors. We are grateful. And we promise that we are doing all we can to help us all be good stewards of all that comes to the church as we share God's love in our community. Now friends, this week, in addition to the opportunity to support the work of the local churches, we want to share with you a need that is near and dear to our Methodist congregations, and that is the need to support our conference camps. As you can imagine, camping ministries are being hard hit by the coronavirus. So we are establishing a fund in each of our churches here in the South Sound to make a gift to the camping ministries of the Pacific Northwest Annual Conference. All of our camps are in need, every one of them. And when we give to this fund, we will be supporting them all. I encourage you to be as generous as you can. And to tell you a little bit more about the needs of camps in these days, we have a special guest with us today. I'd like you all to meet the Reverend Colin Cushman. Colin has served as pastor at Siebold, Bayview, and Cedra Woolley United Methodist Churches in the past. But in December, Colin took on the job of being the director of Camp Indianola. It's a job that is well suited to Colin for he has for many years had experience as a camper, as a staff member, and as a camp pastor at both Indianola and Lazy F camps. So welcome, Colin. We're glad to have you here. Hi there, everybody. Thanks for having me with you. I'm so happy to be there as I just got introduced. I'm Colin Cushman. I'm joined by my daughter, Sophia, this morning. Um, and I just wanted to fill you in a little bit on what's happening at the camps in the Pacific Northwest Conference. So we have four different camps. Uh, we have Ocean Park, Twin Low, uh, Lazy F, and my own camp in Enola. Um, we are having a lot of trouble because of the coronavirus, um, as you might imagine, in some different ways than other people. Um, and the uh so just a quick peek behind the scenes of so we do summer camps with kids and we uh we find a lot of meaning out of that um but one of the ways that we help do that is we help subsidize it with the rest of our operations throughout the year and especially hosting retreat groups uh which helps to offset some of the costs for summer camp to make it less um expensive for campers and with everybody staying at home and not being allowed to congregate in groups, uh, rather logically, um, we are completely shut down at this point. Basically nobody has any income coming in, um, which is an issue when we all have staff that are especially, um, we need to help not go broke and be able to support during the pandemic as well. And so we've been uh, trying to keep them on. All of us have been keeping on our staff for the most part, um, though we have had to have some, uh, some pay and hour cuts, um, some furloughing of staff for some times. Um, and so we are really excited to get back to the business of hosting groups to be able to help especially fund our summer camp and our other programs. 
but uh, we would love your support if you are in a position to be able to support us. Um, the each of the camps on their web pages have um, have donate sites that you can do, or you can send a check to them. The web pages are lazyfcamp.org, twinlow.org, campinola.org, and opretreat.org. And either of any of those, you can do backslash donate, and that'll get you to the right page. Um, but uh, we appreciate your support through all of this. Um, we appreciate your prayers, your encouragement. Uh, please send that along to us. It helps lift our spirits to know that even if uh, you're not able to help financially, that you're still thinking about us and help support our ministry. Uh, we would love your help and support during this time, and we're really looking forward to whenever it is that we can start back up and, and get to spend great time with you and your kids and be able to help do this great ministry that we're a part of. Thank you, Colin. It's great to have you and Sophia with us today. Let us all pray together over the offering that we've just offered up. Holy God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to make a difference to someone in the world. It's an opportunity that is almost always before us, for we can change the world with a word of hope or encouragement, of nurture, of grace, of challenge or comfort. We give you thanks that we have the opportunity to make a difference also with the gifts we offer. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless the gifts we share today as we direct them to the work of our local churches and by extension to the families in need in our communities. Especially today, we ask that you use the gifts that we are giving to guide camping ministries in ways that will transform the lives of those who will one day, soon, we hope, be able to worship and learn and rejoice in the midst of your beautiful creation at all of our conference camps. Bless the workers who are sustaining camping ministry through these days. May they know the support of the network of congregations like ours that pray for them and rely on them to care for our campers, young and old, and to touch those campers with the love of God. We are grateful for all that we have been given, O Lord, and we are grateful today for the opportunity to share. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen.
Methodist founder John Wesley said, best of all, God is with us. And so may you feel the presence of Christ with you in your homes, with you if you are well and healthy or if you are sick, with you if you are concerned over the well-being of a loved one, with you if you are working long hours from home or on the front lines, with you if you suddenly find yourself with hours and hours of unwanted idle time. May you feel the presence of Christ with you through all of the ups and downs of this pandemic and quarantine time and know that you are not alone. And may the presence of the living Christ remind you that you are a blessed and loved child of God. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.